This is where I last saw him. You, teenage you. You were headed this way, arm in arm with Edna. Oh, luckily, my erstwhile wife was never the type to kiss on a first date. If we work fast and stay focused, we can see to it that there, I mean, our relationship never moves beyond the hand-holding stage. Well, will you look at that? The old town theater. What about it? I haven't thought about this place in years. The missus made me tear it down back in 71. Said the movies were corrupting the younger generation. It was all nonsense, of course. I spent countless evenings here in my youth, and it never turned me into a hoodlum. Say, remember Public Enemy? Why, you dirty rat, no good yellow belly stool? Never did manage to see Frankenstein, though. That's what we're here for. We've got to get young you to see Frankenstein. Right, of course. The film that was supposed to set off a chain reaction in my imagination, inspire me with a notion that would launch my scientific career. You've still got no memory of what that notion was? Well, how could I? It happened in the brain of a different Emmett Brown. An Emmett Brown now erased by the shifting sands of time. Luckily for us, I do know something about my own brain, having lived in it for the past 70 plus years. Once we get my younger self re-inspired by that movie, nothing will distract him from his proper... <gasps> Great Scott, will you look at that? The town square? It's just like I remember it, only dirtier. Oh, the old courthouse. Come on now, Doc, you need to go inside huh? and check it out. First rule of time travel, Doc. Never allow your other self to catch sight of you. It could cause reality to collapse or something. You mean? Right behind you. Don't peek. Go on. I'll let you know when you're gone. And don't forget your Carl Sagan. The billions and billions guy? The suspected arsonist. Huh? Just go with it. Sonny, you do show up at the oddest moments. Where have you been hiding? Oh, you know, here and there, you're a little hard to pin down yourself. I went looking for you last night, but... I believe I was off entertaining a beautiful lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never really got a chance to thank you. Well, I'm sure you would have escaped Kid on your own. Kid? Oh, sure, I'm grateful for that, but no, I'm talking about Edna. It's funny to think of now, but until that crisis, I actually thought Edna and I disliked one another. <laughs> Imagine! Yeah, well, sometimes first impressions are right. The thing is, you shouldn't let Edna distract you from, you know, the business at hand. Finishing your project for the expo and going to see Frankenstein. Oh, pshaw. I'm far too busy for movies these days. But, uh... And as for my project, it's practically done. The rocket car? The rocket car? Boy, are you out of date. I've junked the rocket car. But more trouble than it's worth. I'll never figure out a propulsion system that does what I want it to do. And besides, its social utility is practically non-existent. Social utility? Since when do you care about... The mental alignment meter is a much more worthy project. The what? It was Edna's idea, and she's really been cracking the whip to get me to complete it in time for the expo. Emmett, I'm a little confused here. What day is it? Why, it's opening day! 
the opening day of the expo. Which reminds me, I'd better skedaddle back to the lab. If Edna catches me dawdling, there'll be heck to pay. Catch you around, Crockett. October 12th? Doc? Come to think of it, it is a bit brisk for August. Oh, we're two months late. The expo's about to start, and Teenage U is already in over his head with Edna. I always did have a tendency to plunge into things. Let's plunge into the DeLorean and get to the right date. Oh, no, it's far too risky. Remember how I was late picking you up in 86? Yeah. That should have been a tip-off. Something is horribly wrong with the time circuits, and the problem appears to be getting worse. If we try to jump now, we could find ourselves stranded in a Cenozoic age. Oh! Or worse, the Mesozoic. Then we're stuck? For the time being. I'll look into the problem and see what I can do. In the meantime, you can go to work on the other problem. Right. I'll go to the lab and see if I can talk teenage you out of... Impossible. If young me is already as infatuated as you say, you're not going to be able to talk him out of anything. Believe me, I remember. Better to focus on the more clear-headed half of the couple. Edna? Where can I find her? Where do you think? I'll drive. The DeLorean should still function adequately as a means of conveyance in the first three dimensions. You were right. There she is. My soon-to-be ex-future wife is nothing if not predictable. Do I really have to talk to her? I mean, couldn't I just hang out until you fix the time circuits and... Stop! I'll talk to her. You'd better get the DeLorean out of sight before someone... Hey, you! Quit blocking the drive! All Car of the Future contestants need to report to the North Tent! Why not? Good luck! Hey, Artie. Officer. Officer? Oh, right. Don't blow your cover. Will you please keep your mind on the task at hand? Can't talk right now. Spell it. B-R-O-W-N. It's not exactly an obscure name. I still don't see it on the list. I'm sorry. Oh, for the love... Let me try this one more time. This is the Hill Valley Science Expo, right? First annual. Indeed. The purpose of our fair is to showcase cutting-edge technology. That's right. And to burnish Hill Valley's reputation as a forward-thinking community. And yet, you want to exclude the maker of the most revolutionary breakthrough of all. It's not that I want to, but... Oh, dear... Mr. Crockett! You do pop up at the oddest times. What are you doing here? I need to... Whatever it is, I hope you don't have to deal with Mr. Stonewall here. His sole function seems to be preventing people from accomplishing their business. Honestly, with him keeping the books, it's a wonder the Tannen gang got as far as they did. Uh... Have you seen Emmett? Uh... Oh, no. Then you've heard all about his big breakthrough, the mental alignment meter. Isn't it exciting? And to think he didn't even realize the import of his discovery until I pointed it out to him. 
I've never known anyone like him. So oblivious to his own potential. I kind of wanted to talk to you about Emmett and his potential. Funny, I didn't spot it myself at first. In fact, for the longest time, I thought I didn't even like him. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. I mean, Emmett's nice and all, but he's not exactly the kind of guy that has girls swarming all over him. Well, I'm not your average girl. Yeah, but... I appreciate your concerns, Mr. Crockett, but I can take care of myself. I know what I'm looking for in a man, and it so happens Emmett fits the bill to a T. That's Emmett Brown. Rhymes with clown, which I'm beginning to think you are. Just a simple mix-up, I'm sure. I've no doubt of that. Hey, excuse me. Yeah? When does the expo Not open? Not till tonight. Anybody without official business here, please get off the grounds! You got official business here? Yeah. Well, stay out of the way of the workers. You look familiar. Do I know you? Uh, nope. Yeah? When does the expo Not open? Not till tonight. Anybody without official business here, please get off the grounds! Hey, Artie. Can't talk right now. I'm not sure if I've learned everything I can from Edna. Ahem. <clears throat> you said that Emmett fits your bill of requirements for a man. Yes. What would that list be exactly? You'd make a good reporter, Mr. Crockett. You know that? Well, his physical appearance for one thing. Emmett may not be Clark Gable, but he cleans up surprisingly well. I gave him my grandfather's white suit to wear at the expo. Oh, you should see him in it. He looks positively radiant. Looks good in a suit. Got it. And he's completely devoted to me. That's important. I've got no time or tolerance for playboys. Faithful as a Labrador. Check. Thirdly, and most important... Yes? Well, his mind, of course. It's brilliant, and it's virtuous through and through. His own mind map shows him to be a model citizen. Good brain, I see. And if it turned out that you were mistaken about any of these qualities... Say, what's your game? Uh, just curious, just trying to understand the female mind. Well, understand this. I'm not some faint-hearted girl who'd run away at the first hint of trouble. I've made a big investment in Emmett. Not money, but I've sunk all my ambitions into him. I'd have to be thoroughly disillusioned before I'd call it quits with Emmett. Got it? Uh-huh. Now, Mr. Cub Reporter, is there anything else? What the heck is this mental alignment meter of Emmett's? Oh, it's an absolutely revolutionary invention! Measures a person's affinities, what he's attracted to, what he's repulsed by, that sort of thing. Interesting. And it really works? Well, of course! What's the point of inventing something that doesn't work? Or, anyway, it works well enough for my purposes. Rather hard for me to picture Emmett as a chick magnet. Chick magnet? A guy who gets the girls, you know, motors running. Motors? Who makes them, y you know. You mean a chic? Yeah. 
Well, it's a matter of taste, I suppose, but when he's properly pomaded and decked out in my grandfather's white suit, and it just glows, makes my heart flutter a bit just to picture him. You say you know Emmett as a model citizen, but you don't know him as well as I do. Did you know he once cheated some Libyans out of plutonium? Plutonium? What would Libyans want with plutonium? I'm sure he had a very good reason. Emmett's mind map demonstrates conclusively his brain is oriented toward virtue. This one time, to power one of his science experiments, Emmett hijacked a train. Please, there hasn't been a train hijacking in Hill Valley since the days of Mad Dog Tannen. So you say Emmett only has eyes for you? Absolutely. It's almost embarrassing how devoted he is to me. Well, it's good to hear he's finally settling down. Yes. <laughs> settling down? You know, ready to stop playing the field, as it were. Playing the... Oh, you're joking. But I can't help feeling sorry for him. Who? All of Emmett's other girls, now that he's with you. Please, I think I know Emmett by now. There are no other girls. Huh, I wonder what's going to happen to Emmett's little black book. Little black book? Oh, it's legendary. That's what enabled Emmett to become the, uh, Valentino of Hill Valley High. Gee, I wonder if he'd let me have it. You must think I'm pretty gullible, Mr. Crockett. Emmett's done a lot of shady things in this time. My vice principal warned me to stay away from him. Your vice principal sounds like a dolt. That's all the questions I got. Very well, then. Hey, Artie. You seen my Orioli? You mean this? Yeah, thanks. She gets to come and go freely, and I'm forced to wait. I love it. Hmm. I still got some work to do. That notebook belongs to Doc. The real Doc. Have you figured out what's wrong with the time circuits? Not sure. Possibly. It seems to me to be a simple wiring issue, but I'm double-checking to make sure. All the basic equipment appears to be functional. Um, any chance I could borrow the DeLorean? I want to drop in on young you at the lab. Well, I don't know. The time circuits... Listen, I promise I won't take it to 88. Even so, I'm worried about letting it out of my sight while it's still behaving unpredictably. Tell you what. I'll take it on a test drive, one minute into the past. If it passes the test, I'll let you borrow it. It worked! Didn't it? I'm afraid not. In fact, the discrepancy appears to be getting worse. I arrived six hours ago. Oh, too bad. I didn't want to risk undoing any of the work you've done thus far, so I kept out of sight. But the time lag wasn't entirely a waste. I stopped by the hardware store and bought the parts for a chronometric analyzer. A what? A diagnostic device. See, I plug it into the time circuits and set them to cycle. When the green light goes off, I should have the data I'll need to understand the scope of the problem. Hey, no driving the exhibits off the lot! Looks like you'll have to find another set of wheels if you want to get to the lab. <clears throat> to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. Uh, to all who approach these hallowed halls, I bid thee welcome. To all who... Oh, hiya, kid. Say, aren't 
Got you the fellow who... Got you to turn on Kid Tannen? You bet. You look younger without your mustache. That was a dirty trick, you know, making me think Kid had gone and iced Artie. I'm sorry, but it was the only way I could... Ah, uh, forget about it. I'm trying to. Yesterday's in the past. That's my motto. You gotta live for today. Right. So what are you doing down here anyway? Do you wish to pull the levers that control the future? Ah. Uh. At the expo, silly. Technology for a better tomorrow, and all that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's actually why I'm here. So, who are you supposed to be? Don't you know your Homer? I am Techni Muse of Progress. You can tell by the lightning bolts. Must have slept through that class. I'm supposed to be a goddess like. I'm the one who inspires all the great men who make the discoveries. And women, too. Leave us not forget Madame Curie. I never would. So, you work for the expo? Yeah, ain't it a kick? I greet all the important guests. And on the final day, I get to bestow the golden sundial on the winning contestant. So, Artie's working for the Expo, too, huh? Oh, Artie's doing swell! The papers made a big deal of him testifying against Kid. People have been beating down his door ever since the trial. The Expo's darn lucky they could get him. What's Artie's job? Oh, he's a real high muckety muck at the Expo. He's in charge of all the money, and the hiring and firing. Hey, not bad. You're telling me, and super respectable too. It's a real relief for him to have a job where the boss never pulls a gun on him. It's good to see that you and Artie are both doing okay. Oh, we're more than okay. And if things keep going the way they're going, we may be more than just friends before you know it. Well, don't get too serious too fast. Nah, we're keeping things casual, for now. Good. I'm sure Grandma will appreciate that. Techni, Muse of Progress. Not a bad gig. Audie got it for me. It's my entree into respectability. How's Kid's trial going? Slowly. You know what they say. The wheels of justice grind slowly, but infinitely fine. Except in Hill Valley, where they don't move at all. What? Nothing. It's just, you know, something I heard once. So no regrets about turning him in? None at all. I should have known better than to take up with him in the first place. But what can I say? I was dumb. I let myself get taken in by his charm. Charm? Whose idea was it to put a science and technology expo in Hill Valley? Pete's me. Artie says it's all bread and circuses. But I ain't seen a single clown yet today. Listen, I've got a proposal for you. I have this friend, right? No dice. I'm only seeing Artie now. It's not like that. See, my friend's in a relationship with Edna Strickland. Oh, poor schmuck. I wouldn't wish her on anyone. Then you see where I'm coming from. He won't listen to reason, but I thought she might call it off if she thought he and you were, you know. Ah, you are an evil imp, ain't ya? Sometimes a guy's gotta resort to underhanded tricks. What do you say? Sorry. Ah. Uh. Edna might be a pill, but if I play dirty tricks on every dame who disapproves of me, well, well, I'd, I'd play a lot of dirty tricks. Besides, such stunts are beneath the dignity of Techni, Muse of Progress. See you, Trixie. From this chamber of wonders, we bid you a fond adieu. No keys. I'll have to find my wheels somewhere else.
I wish the courthouse did look like that in 1981. Press button to experience future Hill Valley, circa 1981. I don't think I've visited that timeline yet. Come see the cars of the future. Brought to you by Statler DeSoto. Full report. She says she likes you because you've got a virtuous mind, you look good in a suit, and you're completely faithful to her. Damn, she's got me dead to rights. Well, you'll just have to find a way to change her mind. I'll be here if you need any help. Do you need any help? I'm having trouble finding another set of wheels. You sure I can't? Not till I finish running these tests. Perhaps an electric commuter train. This is 1931, remember? Oh, right. Well, I'm sure you'll find something. So, what do we do about Edna? Only one thing we can do. Lie. Make me out to be a less desirable catch than I really am. Why would she believe me? She said she knows you inside and out. Then you'll have to resort to skullduggery. You've done it before. You gotta be getting good at it by now. Yeah, I guess I am. Any idea what your teenage self is doing right now? Unless I miss my guess, he's in the garage frantically working on his latest invention and cursing because he can't quite get it to work. Damn! I think I'm starting to get a plan. Good. Tell me. No, no! After all, it's my history we're talking about. If I learn how you're planning on altering it, my resolve may weaken. I suggested a little scheme to Trixie, but I don't know if she's gonna go along with it. Pursue whatever strategies you like, but please don't tell me the details. Dad never told me about a Hill Valley Expo. It was Mayor Thomas's idea. He had visions of Hill Valley becoming a magnet for big investors in the technology sector. But the adventure folded after the third year when the influenza exhibit leaked into the concession stand. Oh. Press button to experience future Hill Valley, circa 1981. And after the rain, what else? An artificial rainbow, reassuring all the good people of Hill Valley that their needs are taken care of, and life is sweet. The century looks bright for our fair metropolis. 
Jump with us 50 years into the future for a peek at Hill Valley circa 1981, courtesy of Hal's Hardware and the collective imagination of mankind. Could this be our venerable town square? Yes, indeed. Though the form looks strange and new, the function remains the same as ever. But where are all the people? Why, they're underground. A network of burrows extends a mile into the earth, giving future Hill Valley's 10 million citizens plenty of space to work, play, and raise their families. Of course, our residents will want to venture forth into the fresh air occasionally. And what better excursion than a pleasure ride in this elevated super train of tomorrow? Agricultural advances will make it a breeze to feed our burgeoning population. Tired of waiting for Mother Nature to do her job? Just press a button. Presto! An artificial rainstorm drenches the valley's thirsty crops. Pleasant dreams, Hill Valley. And the Expo would like to remind you that you can find everything you need to transform your dreams into reality at Hal's Hardware. Hal's Hardware, serving our fair city since 1895. Seriously, I am not stealing this truck. Yeah? When does the expo not open? Not till tonight. Anybody without official business here, please get off the grounds! Press button to experience future Hill Valley, circa 1981. My future wouldn't be built so shoddily. Uh, hi, Miss Strickland. I was just... Break what you like, Mr. Crockett. It's no skin off my nose. Just keep away from Emmett's booth. Speaking of whom, I'd better go see what's keeping him. Um... I'll go check on him for you. I was just heading there anyway. No, you weren't. The last thing he needs is another distraction at the 11th hour. But... Tut -tut. Not another word. I've got the rest of the day all mapped out. Miss Strickland! I'm sorry, I don't recognize you. Heavens, you've shaved off your hair, but... Carl Sagan? I'd like a word with you, if I may. I'm not sure it would be seemly for me to be seen in the company of an alleged arsonist. I think it may be in your best interest. You see, I know what you're up to. Let's go somewhere where we can talk privately. Go. I'll keep her occupied till you get back. Hang on, Emmett. Hope you're ready for a big breakup. <laughs> 